and this is how it all started. I got some plant pots, I was about to plant some seeds in them. I just got some cactus seeds and I wanted to try them out. There was variants in there and I thought, oh, we'll, we'll give it a go and see what happens. Anyway, picked all of these plant pots up and um, yeah, there was a little bit of soil because I previously used them. And I noticed there was a myrmica inside. So what I did is I started to sort of unravel each pot from inside each other. And yes, you guessed it, there was a colony in here. There was around 50, 60 workers, uh, I'd say around two queens. I only saw two, that's why I'm saying around two queens. I didn't look in more depth than that because to be honest, as soon as I saw them, I got them into this big tub and then just went into action and started to make the tank. So I hope you do like the build. I am situating them right next to my Campanotus Lijna Perda. At the moment, that one's just condensating out. I do this for about two weeks while it's just sort of aging and um, setting in. After that, I remove the second lid. I only did this just temporarily. You can use cling film, anything works, just to get that humidity up to 100% or 99%. This is where Rocky was or used to be, this tank. You can see it's overgrown. He needs a new setup. He's no longer a baby. And the original plan was for him to always go into the giant multi-species vivarium, which he did. So I released him in there. He now just crawled straight into the log, found his hiding spot, and that was that really. He was um, pretty content in what he was doing. Anyway, we'll get with the build of this. The main thing I'm doing here is taking pieces of bark and wood out, getting the soil turned over. I'm going to water the glass again because the glass is very mucky, and then I'll start on the build. I will need more soil because I took quite a bit, bit of it out to replace. But other than that, I'm pretty happy with the tank. There's already, uh, you know, bio soil in there as you can see the sp uh, springtails and isopods running around which is great to see but ultimately for me i am wanting to add some more soil and get this looking just like the large naperda one or as much as i can this one will slope to the right side as opposed to the left because when they are together you can see um obviously that they you know that if you put them together they would fit as one I also have, I'm going to be getting a low boy in between them or a low boy fish tank, which I'll have like immersed plant growth in. I'm going to maybe just keep like a tortoise or something. I'm not too sure. This is all things in the future, but we'll, we'll wait and see, but I'm pretty happy with it um, so far. The main thing is the hardscape. Once you've got the hardscape down, it is literally just the case of getting all of those finer, finer details in there. Um, this, this, this one though, the main difference to the other one next to it is I used different rock for the hardscape. So there was some slight differences. I didn't want it to be absolutely identical. I just wanted it to mirror it as, as much as I could. Um, once I'd done that, you know, the, these rocks are slightly different and, and they'll do really well. A few of these pieces of wood slightly close to the glass, either way they move as I'm, as I'm sort of wiping the glass over and, you know, over and over again throughout the build. But all I'm gonna do is just let this run. The reason being is because the build itself is a few minutes. If you want to skip the build, then you know go forward a few minutes, that's absolutely fine. Um, but if you want to watch me build the whole thing, I do um, put it in five times speed, so you can see that happen very quickly. I also jump through sections as well. So either way, it's not too long um, in terms of build time. Just a quick one here. This is what I use as an escape prevention. Uh, food grade mineral oil. You can get this in on Amazon for like 10 pounds. You get absolutely loads and you do not need to use barely any at all. See here, this is where I've dropped them in. 
So I'll do a little zoom on this and you can see how many there actually is in there. But while this is running, what I was doing in the background is I was just cleaning up, um, obviously wiping some dirt off the counter, etc. But that was about it really. I'm going to um, give this another good watering down, wipe the glass a little bit. I will try them with some sugar um, or a little bit of jelly. So we'll see how they take to that, um, how responsive they are. I think they'll absolutely love it. I don't think this would be readily available for them in the wild at all ever. So <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're going to be absolutely stoked. Whatever it was I was going to give them carbohydrate wise. Um, you could see about 30 minutes later, it was pretty quiet. In my opinion though, Mimica or Mimica, I know I say it wrong, are a super, super cool species to keep. They're very hardy. As long as the soil's, you know, humid and damp, they will be in the soil. They never really try to escape. They're not that bothered. The main concern for them is just getting, you know, dead bodies away from the nest. Um, I tend to find that that's the only thing with this species. You know, they will, you will see them carrying the same body around, you know, for a few days. Um, probably more so after that, uh, they just do because in nature they like to have it about four meters minimum away from the nest. So in something like this, or you know, even even the hugest of tanks, um, you know, you just probably would never be able to clear that distance. So. Um, yeah, you will tend to see them moving around. In terms of aggression, they can be very aggressive and they will, you know, try and actively hunt things. I've seen them hunt worms, you know, fruit flies, crickets, anything and everything. They'll try and give it a go. But if they can't, they won't keep trying. They, you know, they, they tend to um, give up if they can't do it. They are very docile in that side, but, um, you know, they'll always try the best at taking something down. Prime example is here. You can see this beetle was just minding its own business and this lady has decided to take it on her own to try and kill the beetle. This does go on as well for around like 20 minutes or something and she ends up just giving up and this is what I mean. You can tell she kind of just gives up. It's over it. She can pick it up. You know, her strength's there. Um, it's just too hard of a shell. She can't get in and um, yeah, kind of just gives up here. I am happy for the beetle though, I'm glad it survived. I will be adding protein in the one of the next clips. So um, I got quite a good response out of them from protein, not as much as I thought I would, but um, it almost seems like wild caught, you know, uh, much more aggressive than captive ones anyway. M maybe, it's, I don't know, that's how it seemed. But well, they seem much more aggressive than mine. This is them with protein. They're going absolutely crazy. Um, I've even got a moment here where one of them starts attacking some moss that got in the way. But I do love this species as a whole. If you are thinking about keeping ants members for the first time, I do recommend these. Either way, I hope you liked the video, whether it was educational or it inspired you to try and create one of your own, um, or even if you just like watching me build something, the photos of the insects or the ants, anything. I hope you did like the video. Remember, like, no peer pressure at all, but it does go a million miles for the channel, and subscribe if you want to keep up on any updates or future builds I have coming to the channel as well. But as always from me, peace and love, I'm out.